Ladies and gentlemen, welcome tonight to the Men's World 8 Ball Pool Final Championships. Introducing first, ladies and gents, this man needs no introduction. He's fought his way through tonight's final, ladies and gents, and hoping tonight to take home the crown. The electrified Englishman, please give it up for Mark Selby! <laughs> And his opponent tonight, ladies and gents, is one of the most explosive players the competition has seen in years. Will you give it up for the one, the only, the dynamite man, that's Mr. Darren Appleton. Darren Appleton, the number six seed in this event. Up against, well, someone who many might think is a surprise package, not any of us. As a matter of fact, we make Mark Selby slight favorite in this one. It's a race to 11, best of 21, the men's final and the lag to see who will break in the opening frame. Lag is one by Darren Appleton. Dar Darren Appleton will kick things off here. And to my right, the head of the English Pool Referees Association, Mr. Sean Baker. And Sean, I think you, like I, just tip Mark Selby slightly here, don't we? Yeah, I think from what we've seen this week and at these championships, I think Mark Selby's the man who's going to lift the title tonight. It's going to be close. I mean, Darren's going to have to lift his game from the semi-final and quarter-final performances. But I think uh, Mark will just edge this final. Probably 11-8, I think, Well, I'm prediction. Not I'm not placing a bet until I find out what the Fox says. First frame, Darren Appleton's break. The English captain, Lee Kendall. Lee, I'm all over whoever you like here. Well, it again is a very, very close call. Uh, from the eight ball pool, you've got Darren Appleton and the silky snooker player, Mark Selby. I slightly favour Selby, just on current form. Got the yellow in the side. Yeah, yellow ball pocket. Certainly going to be taking yellows here. Beat Chris Melling as we see that break cue employed here again by Darren Appleton. Chris Melling asked Darren if he could borrow the break cue for that semi final. Darren said, No, I don't think so, uh, Chris. You're on your own. <laughs> red Bull's nominated. Yeah, he's actually decided to go reds, and I think it's because he hasn't got a yellow, to be honest. 30 seconds. We see from an overhead shot there. I think it's safe to say you're not going to see many tactical battles in this final. And I think it's also safe to say Darren knows he's got to raise his game. Red balls in play. If he's going to compete with the way that Mark Selby has played. That's a good first shot from Darren there. He's just uh, split the two reds on the right hand side. So there's a, a great opportunity here for Darren to take the first frame, settle himself down. It looks very composed around the table. And you heard Darren in the pre-match interview, just alluding to the fact that he had beaten Selby 8-0. Now, Lee, on, on my records, that was in this tournament back in 2003. Is that the only time they've played? It's the only time they've played uh, in competition. I think they've uh, practiced together, but only in competition. It's uh, the only proper true record of a match we've got. I did actually see that match, and Darren never missed a ball, so it's Mark Selby didn't do anything wrong in that much. Now the eight ball on the bottom right hand corner looks like it passes a yellow so it's just a matter of uh, Darren just negotiating the cue ball around these three reds for a simple eight ball. And this is just the start Darren will have wanted in this match. So just to settle any uh, nerves he may have. He's certainly a man of s and with nerves of steel. I don't think you'll see uh, too many mistakes from these guys tonight. Certainly the way Mark Selby played Lee in his semi-final against Chris Mellon. He was hardly a, a cue out of place, if you like. Well, Mark Selby's played excellent, and, uh, and Darren will know he needs to raise his game. But he doesn't need to raise his standard because, you know, he, he's rolled that one, he thinks he's rolled off. But yeah, that is careless, he should reach it a bit harder. He's upset about the table, but he's left it to the mercy of the table. 
I mean, it, it certainly looked like it turned. Time running. Looked like it just turned up a bit. Might even have got a kick. Well, we've had a few where the, 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 the ball's rolled off, so I don't know if this table is 100% level, but I don't think any players complained about the level of it, but we have noticed a few times the balls have run off. Well, we certainly have the benefit of a slow motion replay that the players don't, and we have seen a couple balls turn. Now, um, Mark will probably attack here, but he could quite easily just roll the, the yellow over the bottom right, played the snooker, and got the eight ball pocket there. Because he has got the yellow tied up on the left hand side rail, but it isn't really what Mark Selby tends to do. He likes to try and take finishes out. But going for the finish does give Darren a chance. The sensible shot is just to roll the white behind the eight ball. Obviously, he's got to play the yellow ball first. Taking lots of time, and that was a quick glance to check the clock. 60 seconds with which to play a shot, and you'll be warned at 30 seconds. seconds. We just heard that call there. He's obviously feeling confidently here. Or is he going to play the the snooker now? No, he's, so go, he's, he's going. Like to, sorry, Sean. He's going to take the cue ball up the table and play it down the rail. And that's just uh, how Mark plays. He doesn't like to play the snooker. A lot of eight ball players would have just rolled the yellow over the bag and got the snooker and made sure of the frame. And Lee, what better way to yeah. punish Darren than converting this to a victory right away? Oh! <laughs> And he missed it by a long way. If you notice when he played the yellow down the rail, it's it, halfway down the rail. Straight into the cushion there and coming away. It would have been an injustice if that yellow would have gone. Well, Darren could have got the cue ball a little bit further into the middle of the table. He's left himself uh, a little tester, but for somebody of Darren's standards, you would expect him to make this quite easily. And make it he does. So Darren Appleton can breathe a sigh of relief in parking that eight ball. The memory of that bad red gone. Appleton 1 0 over Selby in the final. Appleton happy with the rack, and at 1-1, the number six seed, gonna be looking for a ball down on this break in frame number three. And just like Mark Selby, he comes up dry. Yeah, and the balls have split well. There is a few problems on the on the table still. A couple of balls at the bottom left-hand corner look to be together. The yellow looks so it doesn't go in there. So he may need to develop that. It is the yellows he's chosen. Yellow balls in play. Yeah, he does. He does pass into the bottom left-hand corner. Going to can into the yellow and the black. And this shot will open the old frame up. Very good shot. In prime position now. Yeah, this is just what Mark will, in, will wanted after taking that second frame to level the match up. He will uh, definitely want it to come to the table and uh, get get into this rhythm we've seen in his in his previous matches. He gets into this nice steady rhythm, and he's not rushing. He just looks, takes his time, goes around the table, gets down and plays, you know, with a nice cue action that we'd expect. Yeah, the, the, the difference between the two players, whereas Mark's a bit silky and in the balls, he looks really smooth. Darren's more brute force. He goes at the finish and he, he's straight at it, like a boxer. Punch, punches them all in. But the, where Mark's just really, really silky. Time out. And Mark has won eight matches en route to this final. Some kind of performance, unseated. And in fact, twice as many as Darren's had to win to make his I'm way running. to the final. Yeah, and he's had this cue ball on a string in every match. 
we've Not talked to Lee, we've talked about that, haven't we? Nobody has controlled that cue ball better than Mark Selby. And that's why we voted for him slight favourite for the match. Selby takes his first lead at this men's final. 2-1 over Darren Appleton. He swiped the break, and it'll be Selby to break in frame number four. Facing a 3-1 deficit, Appleton comes to the table to break in frame number five. And he's got to start making something happen. Open table. Good rack, bad rack, doesn't seem to matter. Darren can't buy a ball off the break. I don't think there's been a ball made off the break in this match so far. Uh, looking at the table that Mark's faced with, he's got uh, a red and a yellow, which is tied up on the right-hand side. He's elected the yellows. I mean, there's probably just enough room for the cue ball to go past that and cut yellow the yellow down the play. rail, so there is an opportunity for a finish. And I'm sure that's what Mark will be doing, having to go for the finish. Lee, he just looks so composed, so controlled. You know, he's uh, he's almost intimidating watching him, even from the com box. Yeah, he looks uh, the ultimate professional, very, very cool. And when he speaks to him off the table, he's no different. He's, uh, he's a nice lad. <coughs> so he's got a nice angle on this yellow. He just knocks these colors in with robotic regularity. What he's doing now is looking at taking this one bottom left to leave himself an angle on the one that's on the bottom rail to go in and disturb. And I think he should be okay because there's a yellow that goes into the left hand middle from the look of the table there, Lee. Yeah, he, he, oh, he's overcut that one, but he, he's fine. Now this is a tricky little shot, they'll want to play the yellow into the bottom right hand corner and bring the cue ball up and probably just rest on the red above the yellow. Oh, he intended cannoning the red out of the way and he's missed it. And this is a headache. And one for which he's not going to be able to find an aspirin. But he managed to clear the headache in the last frame, so Darren will be all cautious to make sure that he doesn't leave him a possibility of a finish Hope when he gets that. to the table. Because there's, there's no chance of Mark um, clearing up on this finish. See the spin on that cue ball. Red ball's in play. And yes. clearly illustrated with that <laughs> spotted white. Yeah, and, he, and he, he must have called a total snooker there because he had two cushions before he contacted the yellow. So then he didn't need to hit a rail. I don't think you'll see him going for the finish. It's exactly what he's decided to do is just play a bit of safety. He, he wasn't too bothered that he didn't get the pocket because there's no yellows that need to go past that at the moment. It's just a case of containing Mark Selby. If he moves the yellow, the one that he's pointing at, he knows that Darren's ball's going to be promoted. I'll tell you what, he's looking as if he could get behind it and maybe knock it into the opposite corner, to the opposite middle pocket. It's a dangerous shot, this is. And I was just going to say, he could be locked behind the red. <coughs> Delighted that yellow never went in. Yeah, I don't think he could have stopped that as well, Jim. I think the cue ball was always going to be locked to that rail. And I tell you what, you can tell tell you now that Darren Appleton is not going to be impressed with this <laughs> you know he's uh, he just he probably feels Mark's having all the run at the moment and uh, well I think he would have been quite happy because you know it wasn't touching ball he just tapped him behind it so he's going to force Mark Selby to try and get out the snooker and there's a fair chance he's going to extract two shots if he does that Total snooker. I mean, Mark could possibly just roll up behind the red and force Darren to go with one visit 